It's no secret I hate fishing in most games, so who else would be a better fit to try and find the best and the worst fishing mechanics in some of our favourite cosy games? Because irrespective of how annoying and frustrating fishing can be, the lovely cosy game developers just love to put it in their games. Thank you for that. It really has me reeling at times. Anyways, I have selected 10 of my current favourite games and we're putting them to the test today to find out which one will sink and which one will swim to see who'll be crowned the official winner. I apologise for the puns, but it had ought to be done. Let's get fishing. So our first game, I'm gonna start off with Animal Crossing New Horizons. And I did ask my subscribers on Twitter how they felt about fishing in cozy games. And surprisingly, Animal Crossing was a little bit divisive. Not everyone loved this. And to be honest, I'm pretty in the middle. I'm sure most of you have played this game by now, but if you haven't, the mechanic is pretty simple. First of all, you must run around your island equipped with a fishing rod to find some shadows in the water. Once you have found your target or shadow, it's time to fish. So you cast your line into the water as close to the shadow as you can, and then you watch the bobber whilst waiting for the fish to bite. And as soon as that bobber goes under the water, you press the button and reel that fish in. It all sounds straightforward and it is, which is one of the good things about this. But there is obviously still a requirement for good timing and this is what I suck at. Sometimes I'll accidentally press too early or I'll press too late and then the whole thing is kaput because the fish will disappear and then you get no second chances. I guess this is pretty realistic so I'll give them points for that as well. One of the other things I like about fishing in this game is the use of shadows. So it kind of teases you as to what fish will be under the water and you know that if you're looking for a particular fish, you know that it might be a larger shadow or a smaller shadow, so you know to focus on that one, which actually kind of means that you're trying to do as least fishing as possible, which is mine, <laughs> which is my kind of fishing, I guess. So overall, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty straightforward it's not the most exciting it's not the most intricate it's not the most thought out but i think it does its job well so i would say it's a solid seven out of ten next up we have littlewood which is an adorable pixel farming sim available on both the switch and pc this game is really good if you haven't played it i do recommend it i do love this game for its cozy yet simple appearance and that definitely translates in its fishing game too to fish, all you have to do is be at least two tiles away from the fish shadow. It will then swim over once you've chucked the bobber in. And like Animal Crossing, the bobber will sink down to indicate that you need to click. And then you'll have it. You'll have caught your fish. One of the downsides about this game is that you, if you cast your bobber above the fish or try to reel it in too early, it will disappear. There are three levels of rod in this game and the top tip instantly catches the adjacent fish, which is nice. Littlewood also uses shadows as I said earlier, these will tell you where to fish, but sometimes the spawn rates feel a little low, which is kind of disappointing. Overall, it is a nice mechanic, it's just very basic and maybe a little bit boring and tedious to keep having to do, but on the plus side, it means it's not frustrating. I think I'll give this one a 6.5. At number 3, we have another fan favourite, Disney Dreamlight Valley. Instead of hunting for shadows here, you are looking for bubbles, which all have different colours depending on the rarity of the fish. To fish, you firstly cast your line into the water, and then depending on the rarity of the fish, you have to click when the shrinking ring meets the centre circle. The rarer the fish, the more circles, and the faster the timings, so it does get a little bit harder as you go on. The fishing game, again, like other ones, is all about timing, but I do actually find this one easier to do as the moving rings are a lot bigger so you know when to click and you focus really well on them, just unlike the smaller kind of fish, sometimes they don't, so it does feel a lot less stressful. Another good thing about this fishing game is that you're not just limited to the bubbles, you can fish anywhere. Granted, you might not get the best fish, but it does mean you can keep going if you're in a rush or waiting for the respawns, which I will say do happen pretty frequently. I actually can't think of many negative things to say about this fishing game. Casting your line is nice and easy. I do play on the PC though, so I don't know if it's harder on the Switch. Let me know in the comments, but as a PC player, I give it a 9.5. The next game is the newest releasing on this list and it is Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. 
This game is definitely a stripped back farming sim, very laid back but super enjoyable. This fishing game is also very laid back. I think I have actually more trouble scrolling through my inventory to get my fishing rod than actually fishing, which is very telling. But all you have to do is cast your rod into the water anywhere, which is good, and then you wait for a fish to spawn, and then obviously when it goes near the bobber, it will require you to click to reel it in. There is no fancy mini game here or anything you have to stress over. This one definitely gets points for being pretty relaxing however it also loses points as there isn't much complexity to it at all it's not even really a mini game it's just clicking which isn't always that great so i'm gonna give it a five out of ten but it is definitely relaxing it's very chilled and laid back in at number five we have the wonderful wildflowers this is a cozy narrative witchy game which you can play on the switch or pc I've really enjoyed this game so far, but I'm a little bit on the fence about the fishing game. You're only able to fish in areas which have little schools of fish, so your first task is to find one of them, which I found can be a bit of a walk. I'm still quite early game, so maybe this will improve once I've upped my walking speed and got a broomstick. But once you've found your spot, you need to have bait, which is a little bit annoying because the fisher store isn't open all the time so you need to remember to stock up then normally once you've cast your line there are a few different fish which can actually take the bait so if you don't want one fish you have to wait otherwise if you withdraw your line too quick the bait gets consumed and you don't have any fish after a fish has taken the bait it is super easy to reel it in you just need to click which is good the mechanic isn't bad at all, it just felt quite time consuming and my main gripe was about the fact of having to have bait, which I get, I understand, but it's just ugh, another thing. <laughs> I would give it a strong 7. It's finally time to talk about the one, the only, Stargy Valley. Now this game is renowned for being one of the hardest and I will agree. Early game fishing is so hard and I'm pretty certain there are some fish that cannot even be caught with lower level fishing rods. Later game, once you have all of the best upgrades, the situation does change a little bit. But the mini game works in the way that you cast your line, await for a bite, sometimes without bait. This part can be a little timely, but the hard part comes when you have to try and use the fishing gauge bar to secure the fish. And this is so hard. The movement of some kinds of fish can be really sporadic, super fast, it's just impossible to keep up with it, and then before you know it, the line snapped, goodbye fishy. I do feel like the fishing gets easier as you progress, but I can't deal with it early game, and it's the sole reason I downloaded mods in the first place, so that I could avoid the mini game. <laughs> Obviously, there are some other great mods as well, but this was the main reason I did it. I will give the game credit because it does have more complexity to it with things such as treasure chests and the bait edition, but it's just not worth it. It's not worth the stress. And I'm sorry, Die Hard Stardew fans, I just can't get on board with it. So I'm gonna give it a four out of 10, which maybe controversially might be a bit generous. Next up is one of the most unique fishing games I've ever seen. And this is in Roots of Pasha, which released this year. This is a prehistoric farming simulation game and because of that, the fishing varies greatly from other farming sims. You fish in shallow bodies of water initially with a hand axe tool. Once you start fishing, a small and beautiful pond fills your screen. You need to hover your cursor over the fish and it will bring up a meter. You have to keep hovering over the meter until the segments are filled and the fish is caught. Occasionally the fish will get startled and you'll have to move away until they've calmed down or they might hide under rocks, but it isn't too stressful at all. The rarer fish, the more segments there are to fill, so you, sometimes you need to be a little bit patient. But honestly, overall, I love this so much. Yes, it's not your traditional line fishing game, but it's still fishing. It's super relaxing and really nice to look at. The shadows are fish dependent, so you can also try to catch a certain type or something else might take your fancy. Maybe a rare fish will pop in. Some people might argue this is too simple, but I think as you get to later game and find the rare fish, you'll realize it's not. And let's face it, we aren't fishing for the adrenaline rush, are we? <laughs> For its uniqueness, charisma, nerve, and talent, sorry I had to, I'm going to give it a 9.75 because nothing can be truly perfect. Or maybe it can, but not this. 
For number eight, we have Coral Island. This is another fishing game where you're required to fill a progress bar. Initially, when I first started playing this game, I hated it. Literally hated the fishing in this game, but I have learned that patience is key and it's grown on me quite a bit. You cast your line into any water with this one and wait for the fish to appear. When it bites, the bar will also appear. However, do not attempt to reel it in when the fish is splashing around because that will cause the line to break. If you wait until the fish is subdued, it'll be so much easier to reel it in. As I say, this took me a long time to figure it out and sometimes it still catches me out. That wasn't a pun, I swear, because I'm too impatient to wait. Also, some fish are a lot harder to catch than others as they just seem to be flailing around all the time. I feel like these are definitely the rarer fish, which kind of makes sense, but it's just annoying. I guess it's the sign that you need to upgrade your rod, perhaps. In truth, it isn't too bad at all, and I controversially might prefer it to Animal Crossing, and it's definitely better than Stardew's for sure. Because there is just a bit more to it, there's just feels like there's more of a goal to it, and it's more rewarding when you've actually managed to catch fish. So I will give this an 8 out of 10. The penultimate game is Dinkum. I want to love this, and I think it may have had some improvements since it first started, but this is hard. I struggle with this so much, so much so I avoid it. This game varies from all others as you can actually see the three fish swimming around in the water which is actually pretty cool. So you must identify the fish you want to catch and then you cast your line, however it doesn't always seem to guarantee that they will latch onto the line which I found a bit strange. I'm not sure if that's just me, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But if it does latch you must then reel in your catch and much like Coral Island it is dependent on the fish and sometimes you need to give them a break before you attempt to reel them in further otherwise they will escape. The progress bar is pretty helpful but sometimes it feels a little bit random even though the bar is there and if you don't reduce the reel quick enough it does feel like the line health takes a huge drop which isn't good. It's not the worst, it's not the best, so I'm gonna give it around a five. It's a nice middle point. I do, I feel bad about this, but it's, it's nice. I love Dinkum, but the fishing just isn't there. And finally, we have Sunhaven. Now this is another really nice little pixel game. It's witchy, there's so much to it by the looks of things. I've played a little bit, I haven't thrown loads of hours into it, but I have fished in it. And I was warned about the fishing in this game and First of all, I was like, oh, this isn't too bad. Basically, you cast your line in to the shadows. Some of these are very hit and miss. They're quite small, so they're not the greatest to kind of spot. And then once you do latch, you get into a mini game where you just like really need to quickly click on the bar. And some of the fish, sometimes the bars are really big. It's not going too fast. So it's really easy. I was definitely lured into a false sense of security because as I fish more, I realized it isn't always like this. And sometimes it's super hard. The bar, the gauge where you need to click is really small. And also the cursor is just going at like 100 miles an hour. So it's really, really hard for some of them. I don't know if it improves as you get into the game and you get like better fishing rods and things like that, but it's enough to put me off, perhaps, maybe. Um, for what I've played so far, I would give it a, hmm, maybe a six. We'll go with a six because I feel like it's safe. There is potential for it to improve. And it, I mean, it's not bad. You can see where you're going to fish, where you need to fish. And also you can kind of see the bar. I like that. It's quite clear graphically, so that's good. So there we have it. There are my 10 games that I have played. And my winner from this whole list is Roots of Pasha. So this was a little bit surprising, but kind of not surprising because I did enjoy it a lot. I want to know what your favorite from this list would be. Do you agree with my ratings? Looking back at it now, I'm like, maybe I should have scored Animal Crossing a bit higher because it's not that bad, but it doesn't have much to it to be fair. But yeah, overall, I'm quite happy with the ratings that I've given them. Disney Dreamlight Valley coming in second, it makes sense. And I think Stardew being worst makes sense for me. I know that's controversial, I'm sorry. But yeah, let me know in the comments, what's your favorite, what's your least favorite? I would love to hear them. I apologize if this sounds negative, but I really didn't want it to be negative. I tried to keep it as upbeat as possible. But yeah, fishing isn't my favorite thing, if that isn't obvious. So I'll see you again soon in another video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye, guys.